Okay, I was just, uh, I'm sort of um, here on a Sunday um, doing my spiritual group, and I was just talking about my father seeming, uh, you know, I, I sort of sense him as being frustrated he can't go to Bangladesh right now. And I was asked the question, is that my, um, is that my projection from someone? And then to sort of explain what I see and what I would see, I think, if I, if I was not projecting. Um, and uh, am I yeah, I am recording. Okay, so this is great. So, what? So the thing to bear in mind is quite a lot of different factors involved in that. Uh, in me answering that, so um, I I use the course language using the course language that as long as I have an ego, I will be in perception. I.e., uh, until my ego has uh, what I call gone through the death of the ego i.e. is silenced for, for forever, um, uh, which I call enlightenment, or uh, you can call it all kinds of things, um, awakening, uh, death of the ego, uh, St. Francis is in dying, one is born to eternal life. So that is what I call the ceasing of, um, of uh, perception. So the ego no longer is there, and its thoughts uh, no longer taint or no longer create a totally bizarre perception of the world, which is not based in truth. Because what I'm seeing when I see through my ego is, uh, you could say my, my beliefs, my repressed feelings, my, my, my stuff from this lifetime and past lifetimes uh, creating a projection or a perception as the Course in Miracles would call it. Now I've not claimed to be enlightened and gone through the death of the ego. Um, so that means I still have an ego, which means that anything I witness, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, is a perception until it, it's totally been eliminated and gone. Classically, I think I would imagine, I mean, it's possible maybe some haven't, but um, if you look at like Ramana, he, he, he observed as the death of his ego and became an enlightened sage. Um, Often uh, the death of the ego is associated with tremendous fear of the dying of the ego and extreme, um, as the last vestiges get burnt, burnt off. Dr. Hawkins, my, my teacher, um, um, uh, went through, um, um, yeah, a last temptation and the burning off of his ego, which was agony as it burnt off and finally into the light. He said it was about a minute or two. Uh, so I'm, you know, it sounds very similar to Ramana. Um, you know, often a lot of you hear in books or stuff uh, with a lot of others. It's it's really profound the death of the ego, and often one is blissed out and could be on a park bench for months. Hawkins was about ten years uh, to readjust to the world. Went off into the desert because the infinite light and presence is so intense that you know it's hard to think or talk or do anything. So have I gone through that? No. Uh, did I once, I call it the gateway, the terror of the death of my ego if it was to go through? Yes, I did have that once and I've shared that before. It's in some of my videos, but I refused the gateway. I latched onto a thought. So I, I lost my chance when it came the once. So I have to wait to see my next opportunity to see if the uh, allowing. So, so everything I see now is, is perception. It's not, I'm not, I don't claim to be an enlightened sage or anything. Um, so that's, so whatever I thought I saw with my father would be a perception. Now, what am I seeing? Well, what I'm seeing is, is um, tainted or clarified dependent on my level of consciousness in general and my level of consciousness in the day. Um, so what I see, uh, uh, dramatically would shift dependent on uh, where I am. And that can fluctuate minorly um, from day to day and has shifted majorly over the last 20 years of spiritual work. Um, so it's, uh, after my near death spiritual experience, um, I was still heavily in ego. So tremendous, you know, I felt like a, a body with tremendous fear and everything, the world looked very fearful with lots of fearful thoughts. Um, and, uh, you know, that has gradually shifted with a lot of spiritual work over the last uh, 20 years. 
but it seemed to me that he seemed distressed. Uh, my perception of my father yesterday that he can't get to Bangladesh. And I, I and there was an awareness from my end that, you know, of understanding and compassion for him. But I, I wouldn't say, I would still call that a perception. Now, what what do I see? Because what I'm seeing is is tainted by my ego. So you call I'd call it a perception. Well, what I see is actually um, um, it depends, it would be a reflection of how much unconscious and conscious thoughts I have, uh, if there are any feelings going on. Um, but it can fluctuate if I've been doing the observer or, or if I've been feeling everything out and feel quite blissful, I, I'd probably sh um, perceive something different. So, um, so I was reporting. So, um, uh, so uh, what you see and how you see the world changes the more spiritual work you've done as you release more and more of the ego. Um, so, um, uh, so uh, what I, I mean, what I saw, I mean, I am, uh, I guess, um, yeah, I think, I think that will do, that will, will be it. Oh, yes, the last thing I see, I would say is on that. Um, so I was going to talk about this in my workshop this day, I'll talk about it today. So you guys will get to listen to it. Mm. I was going to talk about the Heisenberg Principle. Uh, so, uh, uh, and this is quite famous. Most spiritual uh, readers have read this in a lot of the uh, books. The Heisenberg Principle. So, uh, now the Heisenberg Principle states that, say, a scientist observes some particles, just them observing the particles. I mean, they can shift between particles and waves. I'm, I don't claim to be um, an atom scientist, but uh, something like that. So, if it wasn't observed by human observer, um, it, let's say it would remain as um, atoms, but because it's observed, it shifts into waves. So the power of the observer actually affects what is being observed. I mean, that's the whole thing. Uh, a lot of the older scientists would say, no, no, just because you see something doesn't shift what you see. I mean, for me, the whole thing, of course, in miracles is, you know, miracles uh, come out of source. Um, so it's not, the world is not independent of the seer of what is seen. Uh, so this would be the, the uh, uh, in simple language, the, uh, the miracles seemingly for myself, if there is a self and the others is a consequence of how much um, is a consequence of, um, shall we say, the evolution of the observer. So now the thing that uh, Hawkins beautifully illustrated was what a scientist has got quite a big ego, you know, they're quite, you know, they've got their belief systems and stuff. So if they're observing something, I was going to share this yesterday. So you, um, if they're observing something, then, then they haven't really cleaned their ego that much, but they still have enough. There's still enough of a connection there for them to shift it from way. So we say from particles to waves or atoms to waves. So what if someone who's got no ego was to witness something? Let's say St. Francis or Mother Teresa. Uh, so they have, let's say they had no ego and they were to witness someone or observe someone. What would happen to that being observed? Well, it would be a miracle. It would be a miracle because the power, because the ego is not obstructing the source would be, and for me, I think, as I understand it, um, some um, person came in front of Mother Teresa and, uh, and they had cancer and uh, they got an x-ray done. Oh, there's probably got some people here who, who can rectify that. But as I understood it, um, the, uh, the next time an x-ray was done, the cancer had disappeared. And I'm not surprised that in front of saints and enlightened teachers, all kinds of illnesses and stuff just disappear um, because the power of that. So, so it's good. If anyone wants to become enlightened, you're a blessing to the world. <laughs> but I understood it. I understand why around saints, people have miracles. Uh, around scientists, they can only shift an atom, and that's about as much as they can do. Probably someone in extreme ego is probably not doing too, too much in the field of miracles. Anyway, I'll stop. I'll stop there. Uh, press.